All right, well, Windows 7 expires this year, specifically, I believe, January of 2020. So if you love Windows 7, well, you're going to have to uh, upgrade sometime relatively soon. So what are your options? You have plenty. Let's take a look at some of them. All right, well, first up, of course, is upgrading to uh, Windows 10. If for uh, professional and or personal reasons, you have to use Windows and nothing else, you have definitely have lots of choices starting about two hundred dollars or two fifty to say for machine a low-end machine which will run windows 10 and i believe this particular windows 10 machine starts at about 250. if you have to use windows 10 in spite of its um unique colorful upgrade updates processes and you have to use windows in spite of that you definitely have choices when it comes to windows uh 10 machines just uh, be aware that uh, doing the updates can be um, a challenge uh, annoying and frustrating at least for some users uh, I personally have not experienced those updates update issues in my machines but if you catch the news a lot of people have and it's not fun one of our friends uh, every time she updates her Windows machine she has to re reinstall uh, she has to reinstall her graphics drivers. I'm not saying that will happen to you, but be aware that Windows 10 can have uh, potential issues. But that being said, if you have to use Windows 10 for personal reasons, yes, you do have plenty of choices. Well, next up, if you do not have to use Windows 10 and, and you're looking for possibly a better alternative, uh, friends of mine who have Mac machines, they will never go back to Windows. They think Apple. Mac products are much better than Windows, uh, and I believe them. Yeah, Apple has proven themselves with these machines, with the, uh, of course, with all of their products, iPods, iPhones, iMacs, MacBooks, uh, MacBook Pros, and across the board. They do make solid machines. Uh, these machines tend to held, hold up over the years. Uh, they even have decent resale or trade-in value when it's time. So if you are looking for a machine that has um, uh, proven, them, proven themselves, proven itself uh, to have none of that uh, update, forced updates nonsense. Yeah, take a look into the Mac machines if you do not have to use uh, Windows 10. If, if, I, if I was switching and I did not want to mess with Linux, uh, definitely, I would definitely go with an iMac. Consider something with a retina display. Uh, I, I've seen these live in person. They look beautiful. So yeah, definitely take a look at Mac machines if you do not need a Windows 10 computer. All right, next up are Chromebooks. Chromebooks are Linux-based Google machines. They have proven themselves over the years. Uh, these start at 200 bucks or less. Do they work? Yes, they work fine. Again, don't expect these to be particularly fast or zippy at the low end. But they do work. They all come with a minimum five years of support updates from Google. You know, for a $200 machine, that's not really bad. Uh, but that being said, if you really want to realize the full potential of Linux uh, plug and play, then take a look at the Pixel Book. This is a high end Chromebook. Uh, this one, I believe, is on sale for about $850, $900. This, six, eight, this is a six in one machine, it is a laptop, tablet. Chrome, Android, Linux, and I believe soon the capability to dual boot Windows. This is the only Chromebook, really it's the only machine, period, that has been described as flawless or at least running flawlessly. There is no other machine out there and considering what this thing does for less than a thousand bucks, I think it's a steal. If, if what you do is primarily web-based and that's it and you want to realize uh, the full potential of what Linux has to offer, definitely take a look at the Chromebook and more specifically the Pixel Book. Um, yeah, this machine for what it does, I think is a solid value. Again, these machines are supported for at least five years, maybe longer in terms of updates. All right, finally, the last thing I wanted to mention, and I'll do this maybe as a tutorial in the next video. If you have the time and you have the patience, uh, consider uh, trying a form of Linux. Uh, there are many good choices, or at least some good choices today, as opposed to say when I started with Linux back in 06, 
Linux Mint, Ubuntu, Peppermint. There are choices today for beginners, assuming, and I realize it's a big assumption, assuming that you have the patience uh, to deal with occasional bugs, possibly, and maybe to solve puzzles, as somebody said. But Linux has come a long way, well, some Linux has come a long way for beginners. And for some of you, Linux has replaced Windows altogether. Uh, I'm almost there. I'm not quite there yet. But if you have the patience and are willing to learn, and if you can pick up, and you can pick up a separate machine with a separate solid disk drive or solid state drive and install a Linux newbie, a newbie friendly Linux operating system, that may be the best choice for some of you who do not need to do that much on a computer. Again, I will talk about that in a future uh, tutorial. But for now, those are your best choices if you are upgrading from Windows 7.